Hello, in this video, I'm going to do another example with regular expressions uh, where we want to actually analyze some code, kind of like we did at the beginning of the semester. Um, now what we're going to do is we're going to write something that will look through a Jupyter notebook and tell us all the names of all the files in that notebook. And, and so here I am in my demo. And if I had like a .py file, uh, .py files are just regular text files. And so I could absolutely do something like this. I could say something like with open, um, and maybe I had a file called something like wordcount.py um, as f, and then I could do something like data equals f.read, or, um, or maybe instead of that, if I wanted to, I could say lines equals list of f. I could absolutely do things like that. Um, but how do we deal with having um, a notebook file like this? So I'm going to head over here to uh, my tab on the left, and let, let me go to new, and I'm going to open up a new terminal here, and so I'm going to say ls, and uh, you know I could say cat demo.ipynb to peek inside, um, that would show me a whole bunch of things, or I could say head demo.ipynb, that will just show me the first ten lines, and what I want you to notice is that .ipynb files really are just a bunch of JSON. That's the format, right? Even even though that's not like this extension, right? It's not .json uh, inside. Well, it's formatted as .json. And so what I could do is I could read it in uh, via .json, and maybe I'll do that here. Um, I'll say import JSON, and, um, and, and then I'm going to try to read in a notebook. Actually, it's kind of funny. I could read in myself, right? I could say something like um, with open, uh, the name of this file is demo.ipynb as f. Um, I could say json.load f, and, and, and I'm going to get a bunch of data there. And maybe let me just look at the type of the data. Sure enough, a notebook file, if I parse it as JSON, is just one giant dictionary, right? And I can look at that dictionary. Now, what I'm going to do for this example, um, our goal is going to be to um, find all function names in a notebook. That's our goal. And just to kind of keep things a little bit simpler, I'm going to create a, a new notebook. And, um, uh, and maybe I'll call that one something like target. And this is the one we're going to analyze, right? So I'm going to write code inside of demo to analyze my target notebook. So I'm going to call this one target. And let me create a bunch of functions here. I may say define f, and uh, and maybe um, you know I'll just print hi here. Um, maybe I will um, define another one here. So I'll say uh, actually I may call this one like hello. So this is the hello function. Maybe I'll have to call like print x. That will take x, and maybe this one will print x. You can imagine defining a lot of different functions. Uh, maybe I'll do like one more. I'll say define um, add that takes an x and a y, and maybe I'll return x plus uh, y. All right, so I have all these functions here, and what I want to do um, is I want to write some code over in this notebook to extract the names of the functions in here. And you can imagine different reasons I might want to do that. Maybe we have like a big software team and we've written a ton of uh, functions and we want to analyze how people are naming things or look for trends like how long are function names. Stuff like that, right? Code itself is a source of data that could be analyzed. And, and so when I'm over here, I'm going to open up my target notebook like so, and then print that thing. And when I have a giant blob of, um, you know, a dictionary that I read in, one of the first things I like to do is I look at, like look at the keys that it has, right? So I get a dictionary, I say dictionary.keys, and, uh, and then that's kind of a good place to start because I can look at, well, what is the no no notebook format? Um, I guess they have some version number four. I could look at uh, NB format, minor, so on and so forth. Those are versions. But really, cells are what I'm interested in. I guess with cells, um, I get this nice uh, dictionary, right? And then I could loop over that. And, and so eventually what I want to do is I want to figure out how can I loop over all of the lines of code in my other notebook file and then pull out the function names. And so one of the things I want you to think about here too, kind of big picture, is I'm going to have to use a regular expression to figure out if a line of code contains a function, but I'm also having to use other tools like JSON to actually get to the data. And you want to become very flexible like that as a programmer. I'm kind of mixing 
uh, this tool here that I have with JSON with some regular expressions and then you use all these tools together and, and you become very powerful. So I see these cells are a list and what I like to do when I'm digging through these nested data structures is if I have a dictionary, I like to print off the keys it has. And if it's a list, well, I like to, um, I like to loop over it. So I'll say something like for cell and cells, um, I'll print each one separately like so. And I see I actually get a bunch of different uh, dictionaries. And you can see that I have different types of uh, cell, like this is a code cell. Um, I can see, well, <laughs> let me do my own advice, right? I said each of these things is a dictionary. Let me print off its keys, all right? So I'm looping over all the cells and they have all of these things here, right? And, and I could try printing off different things, right? Maybe I'll print off cell, uh, cell type, um, so that's code. They're all code in this case. I could look at execution count. Um, I get one, two, three. W well, where is that coming from actually? Like if I look back here, these are the execution counts. One, two, three. And so, so I'm going to be here. Um, I could look at me metadata. Uh, nothing there. Um, I could look at outputs. Nothing there. Well, what if I had like some prints? What if I come over here and I say something like, um, uh, here, here, I guess on this one I will, well, let me try actually running it. So I'm gonna say hello down here, and then down here I'm gonna say add three, four. So I have two kinds of things. In this case I just have a print which does not go out to an outbox. And in this case I have something at the end of a line, so I do get that. So, so let me save this and come back here and just redo all of this. And, um, and now I actually see when I'm printing these outputs, um, I have different kinds of outputs, right? I have um, I have text outputs in this case. I have data outputs in the other case. And so you could totally imagine I could write something and see you all what are the outputs of the cells. Um, but that's not what I want to do here. That's a bit of an aside. It's just something I could do. What I'm really interested in is the source. The source contains the code for all of these cells. And so I'm going to say source here. and um, And you can see that well, I'm getting these lists again, right? I'm getting a list of lines actually. So I could do something like this. I could say something like for line and this. Remember my strategy? Whenever I have a dictionary, I look at the keys it has. Whenever I have a list, I, I try looping over it. Um, that's how I dig through these big nested structures and, and kind of keep my bearings. So I'm gonna do that I'm gonna print these lines like so. And I see, cool, I have all the code for that thing and, and really print is adding a new line and, and the line has a new line. So really I ought to do something like, um, uh, I guess I could remove the, the new line at the end with an R strip, right? R strip, great. And, and now I can actually go through and I can get all the code in, inside of all my different cells. And, and maybe I'll just do something like this. I'm just gonna print off cell here so that I can tell them apart, right? I have a cell that contains this stuff, the cell that contains this stuff, so on and so forth. Okay, what I want to do now is see if I can find a function name. And so how can I do that? Well, I'm going to create a, a something up here. I'm going to say, call it f name, and it's going to take a line, and that's a line of code. And what I'm going to do is if I can find, I'll uh, find that in there, well, then I'm going to return that name, okay? And so I have to have some sort of um, regular expression uh, searching. So I'm going to say re dot find, find all. And this will be matches equals this. And, um, and what am I searching for? Well, I have a pattern and then my text. In this case, my text is just a line of code. I'm going to say line here. And then here I'm gonna have my regular expression. And so one of the things I could do is I could look for a word that is right before a parenthesis, right? I could do something like this. I could say a word followed by a, a parenthesis. And remember, since this is a special character in regular expressions, I should escape it, right? So I'm gonna be looking for those things. And, and then what I'll do is I'll say, if length of matches uh, equals one, I'll return 
matches of zero. Otherwise, I'm going to return none. Well, let me actually try testing that thing for a moment. Let me, let me try doing that. So I'm going to say f name, and I'm going to have a function line like this. I'm going to say def f like that. And I see it's pulling out something there. Or if I have like a hello, it's pulling out. Uh, I, I can see I have some problems, right? It's only looking for one character at a time. Um, maybe I should say, well, there has to be at least one letter in that character. But what if I have other things like, um, uh, what if I had a name like this? Hello world, uh, it can find that. Hello world one, two, three, it can find that as well. So, so this seems somewhat reasonable, um, actually. Um, one, of the, one of the things I want to do, though, is um, I, I only want the name, right? I don't really want the parentheses. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put parentheses around this. This is the group or name I'm trying to pull out. And, and so I do that, and it gives me the stuff inside of the parentheses, um, not this uh, parentheses character. Right, so I can do that. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to loop over all of these things like I had, and I'll say name equals f name of the line I'm on. Right, I'm going to do that. And I'm going to say if name not equal to none, right? So I didn't return none. Then, well, let's print off what that name is. And, and so I run that. And do you see what's going on here? If I shrink this down a bit, I wonder if we can see both of these. Uh, let me shrink that. So I see there's hello, which is good. Maybe at the end of every cell, I'm just going to print an empty line too. You you see my problem, right? I'm doing multiple matches. I'm 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 check, uh, catching the the definition, but also print, and then also this, right? Hello, print def. Um, down here I have print x, and then print. And so maybe what I want to do is not just look for words before parentheses. Um, I want to look for words that fill this whole pattern, right, where there is, um, uh, where, where I both have a define and then uh, then maybe some argument or parameters and then a colon at the end. And so let's go back to the drawing board here. Um, I want to find the word define beforehand. So that's good, right? I'm actually getting these things now. Right, so that, that's great. Um, what if I also wanted to return um, a list of parameters, right? So I wanted to be, actually be able to tell uh, that here I have X and Y and, and so on and so forth. How would I do that? So the, the trick here is, well, let's think about this. I may have to have another parentheses and then a colon at the end. I wonder if I actually don't need the escaping. So if I do that, I'm looking for a word. I'm looking for define word parentheses and colon, and, uh, and that's actually pretty good, right? So I'm finding this one. Um, I'm not finding things that have stuff between these two parentheses. Do you see the parentheses? That's a parentheses, and that's a parentheses, and they're both escaped, so it, it looks weird, right? But right here is in between two parentheses. And, um, and of course, that's where all the parameters are, right? So I'm gonna say params, well, these are my parameters. How, how can I capture my parameters? Um, I could just do something like say, well, it's a bunch of stuff. Well, maybe a bunch of stuff. I can say some characters, zero more characters, and I could do that. And, um, and, and that could possibly get me in trouble, right? Because if I have two functions in the same cell, let's say I have, well, that's not quite right. I guess it can't get me into too much trouble since I'm just drawing one line at a time, right? I'm looping one line at a time. I can't get into too much trouble. But to really be safe, I generally like to do that. I like to make it non-greedy so that um, it, it only finds one, or it finds the smallest amount, right? It doesn't have this risk of, of capturing a different bracket. Right, so I'm going to do that. And now I can actually see while I'm capturing these different things. And so maybe what I'll do is when I'm when I'm capturing this, I'll, I'll put all of this in real parentheses. You see how weird this gets, right? I have a parenthesis character, 
in the string, and a parentheses character in the string, and then these are not escaped. So this is actually telling me I'm, I'm catching a new group um, inside of my regular expression. So maybe let me just print off these matches that I'm getting. I'm getting things like this, right? Like that, like that, so on and so forth, right? And, and so I think what I can do is I can try to split that by how many arguments I have, right? So, so let me think carefully about this. So, so when I return matches now, I'm returning too much, right? So I should really have something like, you know, match equals that. And then the, the function name is the match of, at zero, right? The match at zero is right here. Let me just return that for now. Let me make sure I haven't messed up my code too much. Uh, I, I'm still in grid shape. I'm catching all my functions, returning their names. Um, let, me, let me print that other piece though. Let me just print like debug and then match. And so I can see, well, I, I'm catching these things, right? And so maybe what I'd like to do is also return the parameter names. And, and so I can do something like this. I can say uh, params equals match of one match of one will be something like this or something like this and i want to split it on the comma right so i'm going to say dot split comma and then i can actually see well what are my parameters in this case and i have x and this and this you know it's kind of messed up right when i have um a parameter named that is just empty right there's no commas in there and when i split something on a comma that, that doesn't have any commas, well, I just get whatever is there. And so really what I should do is say something like this. I should say if length of match, if that is greater than zero, then I'm actually going to do that. Otherwise, params equals empty, right? I don't have any of them, right? And now I actually kind of have something more reasonable, right? No params, x, this one takes x, y. And so this seems pretty good. And, and so what I should do down here is I should say, um, let me try to actually return two things. I'm gonna return both my name and my params. You know, when I do something like this, when I put two return values, I still only return one. And the one thing I'm returning is a tuple, right? So I run that thing and I'm gonna be returning a tuple. And you can see I'm, I'm getting a tuple, 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 whenever I print the name down here. Right, not exactly what I wanted. Maybe what I'm gonna to do to make this a little bit more general, so I'm gonna say result here. And I'm gonna say if result uh, is none, I'm gonna continue, right? I'm gonna skip this line of code. Otherwise, well, let me print off the type of result. What do I have here? Okay, whenever I'm finding, whenever I'm finding something, I'm returning a tuple, right? You see this becomes a tuple down here. And well, and there's different ways I could get stuff out of here. I mean, I could do something like this. I could say result of that would be the name and then result of that would be the parameters. But, but I can really do something like this. I can say something like, um, uh, I can say something like name and params equals, I mean, I could put this here like that. That would actually work fine too or I can, I can just say result here and it'll figure out since this tuple has two items to split them into these two. And, and so now down here I can say, well, what is the name and the params that I'm dealing with, right? So I can do that. Uh, and if I can spell correctly, I will get what I'm looking for. So let me delete this a little bit, kind of clean up a little here and there. And this I don't need anymore, right? So this is pretty cool, right? I can pull out all the function names from a notebook file and I can print the, the um, names of the parameters that each function has. And, and notice like all the different tools I used here, right? I'm using, I'm using JSON, right? I'm using JSON to load this and using that to loop over the cells down here. Within each cell, I'm looping over the lines of code. In addition to JSON, then I'm doing these regular expressions to pull out both the, the name and then the list of parameters. When I have the list of parameters, I'm not trying to force regular expressions to split that up. I don't know how I would readily do that. That would be difficult. I'm using this right here to split it up. And, uh, and that makes my life much, uh, much easier, right? So 
be comfortable using all these different tools to manipulate strings to ultimately get uh, what you're looking for um, in the end.